week, I was addressing a bunch of young interns who had joined from B schools and engineering colleges about what kind of job do they want to do. The first answer which came is, I want a work-life balance. So I said, what do you mean by work-life balance? They said, I want to work 40 hours in a week and rest, I want to do whatever I want. So my point was, can you really compartmentalize it? In fact, I met a very interesting gentleman uh, on lunch club. If you look at it, the opposite of life is death. And when you're talking about work-life balance, is work that bad that we are equating it to death? I think this is an interesting area which we have to look at that you can still have a job and you can still do a lot of other things. A lot of uh, us are not really lucky to have a job which is close to our heart. But the way I look at it, Sunil Gavaskar, one of the greatest batsmen India has ever produced, he said that in a 50-over match, there will be one or two bowlers who are unplayable, while the other 35 overs, you can actually make a lot of runs. So if you start treating life that it's an amalgamation of so many other circles, I think at the end of the day, you will lead a fruitful life. But what matters at the end is I want to be happy. So if I look at it, are you happy at work? Now, it's a very interesting study which was done by Gallup. They said 60%, yes, 60% of people today are unengaged in work. 45% of people have high levels of stress. In fact, an Indian survey said that 86% of people, they want to quit their job in the next six months. Mackenzie says globally, 40% of people want to quit their jobs. But do understand that if even if you quit, you will do what? Because it's fantastic that you are financially independent, but again, no amount of money is enough. It's not like PC Sarkar's Water of India that you will go and delve. Because do understand that, finally, you are eating into your savings. So some kind of income and all that, as long as you get it, that is good enough. But thing is, even with having a job it may not be a 9 to 6. You can still do it because our work is only one part of our life, while the other parts actually need to gel together. Now, if I look at it, I have been reasonably successful in my corporate world. I started as a graduate trainee with Tata Motors, three years in Jamshedpur. The heights of that was we had a temporary worker strike, and some of the vehicles were assembled by us. Uh, unfortunately, they still ran. We started the Indica car and that was a hallmark because Indica was not a successful car. But the way it looked at it, it changed the entire marketplace. We were offering a car at 2.5 lakhs. But how did we do that? We looked at the second hand assembly line of Nissan Australia, refurbished it. And that's, I think, the world needs today. We colloquially talk about Jugard. It is unfortunately taken in a negative sense. But do look at it, what the world needs today is Jugaad. Because at the current state, to support one Earth, we are actually using 1.8 Earths. It's not the resource depletion. It's the rate of resource depletion, which is of concern. So if you look at it, this is what I have been doing over the last few years. Uh, again, when I moved to Lafarge, again, cement sales is not a very great job to me because you deal with people who have a lot of financial muscle, who have a lot, are into armed conflict. But the way I look at it, I look beyond jobs. I learned what is rural India. I spent a lot of time in the Naxalite Bells. I was in Chhattisgarh, Odisha, and actually saw what India is. So I think that was a huge, uh, big thing for me because I at least started appreciating how other cultures are seriously moving. Now, this is again an experiment which we started. I am in Hyderabad for the last 18 years. I stay in the old city. There's a place called Saidabad, close to LB Nagar. People who are familiar with Hyderabad. So we had an issue where there was huge crime, there was domestic violence, there was unemployment. And for any society, if you have these kind of things, a society cannot function. So the option was, what do we do about it? So fortunately, there is a community, there were rich people in that community. They said, let's pool in some money 
and we actually started a school. We got these kids into school. Remember, they were first generation learners. Their parents never went to school. We did not have teachers. Some of the initial batches, I was teaching them. I was learning physics, chemistry, haven't forgotten what I had done. And the uh, tough part was the behavioral aspect. It is a co-ed school, and if you look at it, the guys were hitting the girls. And I said, why did you do that? They said, it is normal. This is what we see at home. So I think that was a revelation for us that if we have to change society, we have to start from there. Today, if you look at the school, if I don't exist, the school will function. It is run by the students. They have a parliament. They have an opposition. Everything is taken care of. We have tied up with Teach for India to give it a more professional look. There are a lot of single mothers of these kids. So what we have done is, entire food is cooked in the school. We don't allow any outside food. We don't make it free because we believe that the moment you give something for free, people don't appreciate that. We have helped them open bank accounts. And if you look at it, the Telangana government has actually recognized it as a model school. So if you get a chance to visit this school, 18 years, running fantastic. There are four girls who graduated as doctors. There are 10 girls who came back to the schools and they are teaching there. I think this is how we have been able to complete the entire circle. And while I have been reasonably successful in my work, but I think nothing has given me more satisfaction, even with a nine to six, beyond nine to six job, I was able to actually do this. Now, this is again a hospital uh, known as Akarasha Hospital. It's based in Kukatpalli in Hyderabad. It's next to the metro station. Now, why it is important? In a world where we are talking about diversity, we are talking about equity, we are talking about inclusion, we are talking about having differently abled people come into the, to the limelight. The problem is the world has changed. That's why we need a representation from everyone. Now as adults, even if somebody makes a mockery of us, we feel very bad. But look at these kids. They don't understand what is a cleft lip. They don't understand what is if your ear is not developed. And these kids are bullied in school so much. So what do we do? As adults, we have a challenge looking at there are the kind of suicides which we have seen in the country. In fact, India is one of the countries where the maximum suicide rates are there, and mostly in the 16 to 19 area. And look at their skills. Can they handle it? <laughs> so what we did is we again started an experiment. Somebody was generous enough to donate us two acres of land. There is this fantastic surgeon called Dr. Bharatendu Swain, who left his fledgling practice in US. And we set up this hospital to do this reconstructive surgery. We don't charge any money. There is no billing counter. If you want to pay, you can. Their relatives, their attendants can stay in the hospital for free. And fortunately, the world is still a very nice place. We always got somebody who helped us. So we never ran out of money. And when I look back, when the kids come back, their parents come back, they actually treat the Dr. Swain as God. And he is God. And I was very fortunate that I managed the other, the marketing and the website communications for them. And at the end of the day, other than my work, I think this is what has really kept me going. Now, this is a trip which I had taken in 2017. Um, I was 42 at that point of time. And we had nine people from these schools, all 24. So we, des we decided to do a 11-day trip to Everest Base Camp. And why it was important is I actually saw the Sherpa community from a very close point. The fact that they have nothing, but I think they are one of the happiest people on earth. I had three near-death experiences. There was a dog which actually came from somewhere and guys, we had lost our way. And if you look at it, the Sherpa is going to give you a life. I am just a stranger for him. But if you look at this community, I think this is what matters and in a world where we have so much conflicts. In fact, as I speak, there are 68 conflict zones in the world. And I think this is the way we are moving if we have to make it a better world. I think this is what we need. And the fact that I saw Everest from this distance, I think nothing can be better than that. And from that day, 
I had, there was a big change. I stopped chasing material things in my life. And if you look at it, there's a very interesting study done by Howard. They had actually tracked an entire generation, right from the way they were born, they went to school, they did their graduation, they did uh, their masters, they had their jobs. Some of them are still alive, but the interesting thing which came out is, it's not name, fame, and money which gave them a more happy life, which gave them a more fruitful life. It was the relationship. It can be your friends, it can be your family, it can be the social thing. I think that at the end of the day, we all want to be happy. And this is what drove the fact that, yes, we all want fame, we want, all want money, that is one part of our life. It's very important that if we integrate these pieces together, because it's like a typical human body. If one organ stops functioning, there's a problem, right? I can take the best hand, I can take the best leg, I can take the best brain, and I can build a body. Will that be the best body? May not be. A best body is something which is coordinated. And I, that's where it's important that as a life, you will we all will achieve a lot, but it's important to have a very meaningful life. In fact, I remember Shalini Pillai, who heads HR in KPMD. She used to tell me, Sandeep, look at any organization. Any organization should have a purpose. Your life should have a purpose, and it is beyond work. Work is just one part of this circle, while if you get to do what you enjoy, fantastic. Not everybody is so lucky, but even if you don't have it, treat it as those 10 overs, which Sunil Gavaskar mentioned in a 50 over match, you can still need it because at, we all need money for a basic survival. Because if you are financially independent, very good, but do understand it leads a lot of frustration the moment any source of income stops. So this is, I think, way we need to look at instead of looking at a balance, work-life balance, I think it's important that we integrate that. And there will be days when you will have lot of work. There will be days when it will leave. In fact, Arunduti Roy in her, uh, Arunduti Bhattacharya in her autography mentioned that even when we were posted in SBI in New York, there were days when she did not have much work. She was very frustrated. Then her boss said that, why don't you explore the museums? And if you look at it, because she had a background in English literature, with no background, she turned out to be one of the most prominent bankers in the history of SBI. She rose up to the chairman. In fact, SBI had a designation called chairman. They couldn't change it to a chairwoman. chairwoman. But I think this is where she was able to integrate her life experiences into a job which actually got her so many laurels. Now, coming back. I grew up in a very small village called Gomia. Again, it is uh, about 50 kilometers from Bokaro. Why I'm talking about it? Because we had a single steam engine which used to take us there. We did not have any restaurants. We did not have any movie theaters. If we had to see a movie, it, we had to do it the Swadesh way. We had to look at a big screen, put it in a field. Similarly, we had people from everywhere in India. We had people from Tamil Nadu, we had people from Kerala, we had people from Rajasthan. And if we wanted a particular kind of food, we had to catch, say, I want a South Indian food. I had to catch hold of a Madrasi auntie. And every festival was celebrated. And that 23 years, early years which I spent, I think I still reckon as one of the happiest because we did not have enough resources. We still drank water from the tap because we had a filter water plant. We did not have money to buy books. It was borrowed from somebody. We did not have a mode of transport. We walked. But when I look back, I think this is all these life experiences has helped me. In fact, if you look at it, I've been fairly successful in my corporate world. But having said that, because I have tried to always integrate all these experiences, I think that's very, very important. Now, I went to a B school. Again, uh, I saw this campus, a beautiful campus. I always had a dream of coming to an IIT. Of course, today I think that's the day for me. But I went to the B school. I was the fifth batch. We did not have a campus. But what helped me was we were the batches who helped build an institution. Not everybody is lucky to build an institution. 
we were trained to ad to handle adversities. If you look at the mess, if you look at the placement, and if you look at it now, it's the number three in India. And I think when I look back, I think that's where and the institute was generous enough to induct me as the board of governors in the in the current scenario. But I think always grateful that I got a chance to build an institute, and that has been actually a big, very very big lesson for me. Now, health again, we say health is wealth, but as youngsters, even like you, I always neglected my health. I have spent about 20 years in consulting, traveling 25 days in a month, getting up 3 o'clock in the morning, taking a 5 o'clock. It takes a toll on your body. Maybe when you are young, you don't realize it because your body can absorb it. But what happens is, at the age of 45, I started developing blood pressure problems. So I said, yes, it, it's time to pause. Today, I go for a jog every morning for an hour. I don't neglect on my sleep. I look at what I eat, because it's very important that you integrate everything. That is the crux. Now, again, as I said, you need to have a very good social network. You need not have too many friends, but these connections, the meaningful relationships, it actually just what gives you meaning to your life. So again, this is my dad. I just wanted to bring it here because an excellent chemist, a gold medalist from his school, but what happened is at the age of 56, he decided to retire. The fact is never retire. Even if it is not for money, do something. Because what happened is towards the end of his life, he developed something called a dementia, which is a very tough disease because I was his caregiver for four years. I know the pains. So what typically happens is, he dies, he died twice. Once he stopped recognizing me and then the way he died. So this is again, another thing is he said, I will travel only at 60. But at the, at the age of 60, you may not be strong enough to travel. So this is important that you integrate travel in your life. To sum it up, if I look at it, your, there was a lady who came to me and said that, I'm very upset with my husband. I said, what happened? No, he doesn't do that, he doesn't do that. I said, you have an idea of 10 things in your life, right? Does your husband do five, six things for you? She said, yes, I think you are good enough. So the point is any relationship you look at that one person will satisfy everything. It's just impossible. But leaving a caveat that you should know your boundaries, it's very, very important that we have a circle of balance because unless we integrate our life, I think we will still crave my job is bad. So if you have really integrated all your parts together, one bad piece actually negates for the other piece. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. It was a privilege and honor to be here. Thank you so much.